Okay, so I'm going to go ahead on and pray us in. Uh, Heavenly Father, Lord, I come to you in the name of Jesus, just thanking you, Lord, for these opportunities to share a word with your people. I ask that you would lead me and guide me, help me to speak on this message, and that you would minister to the hearts of those who are listening. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Glory be to the Lamb of God. So today I want to talk a little bit about unforgiveness. Because we have a lot of people right now in the body of Christ that are dealing with unforgiveness. They are not making no progress in their walk. They're losing their anointing. They're losing their fire. They're not experiencing the joy of the Lord. The kingdom of God is not being manifested in their lives because they are holding on to unforgiveness. And in Romans chapter 14, it says the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. And when you are in alignment with the Holy Spirit of God, there is going to be an explosion of peace and righteousness and the joy of the Holy Spirit that will manifest in your life. And Nehemiah 8.10 says the joy of the Lord is our strength. But when you begin to harbor unforgiveness in your heart you start to hold on to hurts for uh, what people have done to you what happens is it's like taking a bucket of mud and throw it in on top of a fire what happens is it begins to really smoke really strongly and the fire begins to weaken out and weaken out it doesn't go all the way out but it begins to slowly weaken out and weaken out and weaken out and it the 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 heat gets uh weaker and weaker and weaker and this is what unforgiveness does to the fire of God that inflames our hearts. It begins to dim out the fire, it begins to snuff out the fire of God. We lose the love of God. And what happens is we begin to become bitter. We get bittered in our spirit and our spirituality begins to stink. Our attitudes begin to stink. Our perspective on life begins to stink because we begin to fall in to a place of regression. We no longer progress progression progressing in our lives with Christ, but we are falling into a place of regression because we are holding on to unforgiveness. And this unforgiveness is designed to snuff out the love of God. It brings in a spirit of bitterness. And the longer you allow this unforgiveness to linger in your heart, that bitterness gets stronger and stronger and stronger until it corrupts your whole perspective on life. It corrupts your whole personality. It brings you into a place of defeat where you regress from the grace of God so far that you just get so darkened in your heart. And a lot of people right now are dealing with unforgiveness and they're wondering why there's no fire, why they are not maturing in their walk, why they are not experiencing the peace of God that surpasses all understanding that guards our hearts and guards our minds. It's because of harboring unforgiveness. And God wants us to love. The Bible says that if you cannot forgive uh, your brothers and sisters that you see every day, how can you expect God to forgive you? And God will not forgive nobody if they don't forgive others. That's just how it is. I mean, we got to think of what God did. He sent his only begotten son to die for the sins of humanity uh, so that we can receive forgiveness. It was his token of mercy and compassion towards us. Even though we were sinners and we were rebellious and we have wounded the heart of God, God went beyond that point and says, look, I am going to forgive them. I am going to offer up my son as a living sacrifice for the, for the sins of humanity so that I can save some from the torments of hell. And God be, went beyond the point of our sins that even though yet we were still sinners, Christ came and died for us. 
And God has forgiven us uh, through his son, Jesus Christ. And he expects us to forgive all those people that have ever done anything wrong to us in our lives. And if we do not forgive them, God will intentionally hand us over to the tormentors. And the tormentors are principalities, demonic spirits that will come into our lives and begin to torment us until we decide to let go of that unforgiveness. And I want to read us a, a, a passage right here in Matthew chapter 18. And I encourage y'all to go look at this whole chapter. Chapter 18, starting at verse 19, all the way to verse 35. Because I'm not going to read the whole, pa uh, the whole chapter, but I just want to read a partial point. And I'm going to kind of breeze through and give you kind of like a, a lowdown of what's going on right here. Right here in this particular parable, it's the parable of the unforgiving servant. He owed his master some talents or some money. And uh, the master called him to account of what he owed. And he owed him a lot and he couldn't repay the master. And what happens was the servant gets on his knees and says, please forgive me, have compassion on me. And the master was moved with compassion and forgave all the debt that his servant owed. Well, the servant left and while he was going down the road, he met another one of his servants that owed him some money. Well, this servant that just had got forgiven by his master um put his servant in jail uh and um basically he he did because he didn't pay he didn't pay and when the other fellow servants saw what that servant did to his fellow servant he went and told the master and the master said you evil and wicked servant he said i forgave you and you're not going to forgive your servants now, I want to read you this last portion of this passage. It's in Matthew chapter 18, um, starting at verse 32. Now, I want us to understand what a parable is, okay, before I read this. A parable is an earthly story with a spiritual meaning, okay? It's an earthly story with a spiritual meaning. And Jesus always gave us earthly stories that always had a spiritual meaning to it. And in Matthew chapter 18, verse 32, excuse me, there is a lawnmower passing. In Matthew chapter 18, starting at verse 32, it says, Then his master, after he had called him, said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you begged me. Should you not also had compassion on your fellow servant just as I had pity upon you? And his master was angry and delivered him to the torturers until he should pay all that was due. So my heavenly father also will do to you if each of you from his own heart, it's a heart thing, does not forgive his brother uh, his trespasses. So our Lord is giving us a parable about an unforgiving servant. And a parable is an earthly story that has a spiritual meaning. And what God is saying in the story, he's saying that if we don't forgive our brothers and sisters that we see every day and that we harbor unforgiveness in our heart, what God is going to do, he is going to deliver us to the torturers until we should pay all that was due. And what that means is God is going to release the tormentors upon our lives. And these tormentors are principalities. They are demonic spirits that will come into our lives to give us trouble, oppress us, depress us, bring us into a, a place of uh, suppression where we will get uncomfortable in our walk. We will start to regress. We will start to get bittered in our heart because we are holding on to this unforgiveness. And the purpose of these tormentors is to wake us up to realize that, hey, I have to forgive my brothers and sisters. I have to love them no matter what they have done because 
holding on to unforgiveness does not hurt anybody else. It hurts ourselves. Because God will hand us over to the tormentors until we are willing to forgive. Until we are willing to say, okay, uh, Lord, forgive me. I'm searching my heart right now. I have did this person wrong. They done me wrong. Lord, I want to forgive them from the heart. I want to apologize to them. I want to humble myself and bring myself into a place of humility. And call that person on the phone or go up to that person and truly forgive that person with a heart of humility from the heart so that I can be released from the tormentors. So that I can fall back into a place of progression rather than being in a state of regression. Because the more that you hold on to that unforgiveness, oh, you are going to become bitter. You're going to become aggravated easily. You will lose your peace. The peace of God will begin to move away from you. You will begin to grieve the Holy Spirit and God will begin to send these tormentors into our lives if we don't want to forgive from the heart. And this is so, so serious. And God is not playing with unforgiveness. And the purpose of these tormentors is God's mercy. He sends that so that we can recognize and realize what's going on. I'm losing my walk. I'm losing my fire. I'm losing the love of God. I'm becoming bitter. I'm getting angry. I'm no longer experiencing the peace of God. And then you kind of wake up a little bit. Something's going on. Something ain't right in my walk. And you begin to uh, analyze yourself. So that you can recognize, whoa, I am harboring unforgiveness. I am angry at my brothers and sisters. Oh, Lord, Father God, please forgive me. And you go into a place of repentance, not just repenting to God, but going to your brothers and sisters and making things right. Telling them you're sorry, even if they want to be angry at you, even if they don't want to receive your forgiveness, you play your part. You let that stuff go so that you can come out of that place of bitterness and regression. And I tell you what, once you start to do that, you are going to see a release. Something is going to be lifted because God is a God of his word. He will release you from them tormentors. He says this. He says he will hand you over to the tortures until you should pay all that was due. So once you pay what's due and what you owe to your brothers and sisters is love and forgiveness and mercy and compassion. And once you uh, pay that debt. To your brothers and sisters and you forgive them from the heart, God is going to forgive you. And God is going to release you from that, the tormentors that are bringing you into that place of regression. And a lot of people right now are in a place of bitterness right now. And their whole character is being becoming corrupted. And what happens is that bitter corruption that begins to manifest in our characters when we start to hold unforgiveness it causes us to corrupt other people's lives because we become bitter not be not not just towards those who done us anything but that bitterness causes us to be bitter to those in our other relationships then everything else starts to fall apart and other people's lives begin to become corrupted. You ever heard the, the words, somebody, somebody probably said this to you, misery loves company. Well, that's what happens when you become bitter. You become miserable. And you just have a poor perspective on people and on, on life. You have no peace. You're angry. You're upset. And everybody that comes around you, you, look, you are moved to, to bring them into a place of bitterness. You're not trying to encourage them. You're not trying to edify them. What you're doing is you begin to to just speak words of discouragement over their lives or you begin to hurt them with your words. You begin to wound them with your words because you are harboring unforgiveness. And that unforgiveness is an offense. It's a wound of the heart. And wounded people wound other people. And this is why it's so important for us to examine our hearts and to 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 ask the Lord if we are harboring unforgiveness because man we have to love this is what it's all about Jesus commands us to be perfect in love I mean 
he wants us to love. Love is a command. Forgiveness is a command. And, I mean, all we have to do is say, look, I love you. You know, I'm letting go of this stuff. I'm not going to hold this in no more. I'm tired of holding in anger. I'm tired of holding in unforgiveness. And I'm just going to forgive you. I don't care. I am going to walk in love. I don't care how trashy these people talk to me. I don't care how mean they are. I don't care what he said or she said. I am still going to love. I am going to walk in love. And the fruit of the Holy Spirit is going to begin to manifest in your life and you will come out of that place of regression where the grace of God will begin to manifest in your life again because what happens is once you start to hold on to that unforgiveness you start to fall away from the grace of God and you become bittered Hebrews chapter 12 says this in verse let's start at verse 14 and we're going to go to verse 15 it says Pursue peace with all people and holiness, without which no one will see the Lord. So that pursuing peace is pursuing a life of love and, and forgiveness towards all people. And it says, verse 15, looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up causes trouble, and by this many become defiled. So because of unforgiveness in the heart, a person will fall away from the grace of God. Like the scripture says, they fall short of the grace of God. And there is a root of bitterness that begins to spring up in their heart that causes them trouble. And by this, the scripture says many become defiled. Why? Because when bitterness settles in your heart, you be, move into a place of offending other people because bitterness is caused from a wounded heart, from unforgiveness. And wounded people wound other people. And when you go to wounding other people with your words, your attitude, the way you're treating people, it wounds their hearts. And they become defiled. They become bittered in their heart. They become corrupted. And there is an ongoing process uh, as where... Satan uses us in sort of like a domino effect where he uses somebody to hurt us. Then we harbor the unforgiveness. And once bitterness settles in our heart and, and, and you know, we are wounded in our hearts, we go ahead and we start wounding other people with our words and our attitudes because we get a poor perspective on life. We lose the love of God. We lose the joy of the Lord. We lose the peace of God. There is a regression in our lives. We start to fall away from the grace of God. And but when we start to forgive, what happens is we fall back into alignment with God. And God is pleased with what we're doing and he begins to lift that burden of bitterness off of us. He he begins to pull back uh the the tormentors from our lives and we begin to fall back into a place of experiencing the kingdom of God manifest, manifesting in our lives. And once again, Romans 14, the kingdom of God is not about eating or drinking, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. So when you walk in an alignment with God, these fruits will be manifesting. You will have the peace of God that will be uh, manifesting in your life, the righteousness, the joy of the Lord but once you start to harbor unforgiveness in your heart what happens is it begins to snuff out the fire of God you lose your love you lose your joy you you lose your anointing you you lose the desire for the word of God you lose your desire for prayer I mean there is a, a process of regression that begins to um, start within our lives and if we do not deal with it, it will bring us into a dark, dark place where we will begin to fall deeper and deeper into darkness until finally some people, they don't come out of it. But glory be to the Lamb of God. Thank God that He is a forgiving God. And I want to encourage y'all today to search your hearts. Let go of, of offenses. Anything that somebody did to you. I mean, grudges you're holding on to. Let it go. It's not worth it. What it's doing is destroying your own 
character. It's defiling and corrupting your own heart. And one, you, if you can continue to hold on and retain that unforgiveness, it's going to destroy you. And just let that stuff go. Uh, look out and love people. Intentionally love them. Do it with intention. You know, tell yourself today that I am going to love people. I'm going to love people regardless. I don't care how mean they are to me. I don't care how ugly. I don't care what they did to me 10 years ago. I'm going to go walk up the, to them and tell them I love them with the love of God. And I'm going to start praying for all those that have done me wrong. Because the Bible says pray for those who hurt you, who are your enemies, who spitefully use you you and I'm going to uh, spend diligent time in prayer praying for these people and what that will do it will cultivate um, a process of healing in your life and uh, the joy of the Lord is going to come back into your life um, just uh, the other day I want to share this quick testimony with y'all before I close I was in prayer and I was praying to the Lord uh, real strongly and asking God if there was anybody that I've done wrong that I want to I want to ask them for forgiveness and tell them that I'm sorry. And um, I was in prayer really hard about this. And when I went to sleep that night, I had a dream of this pastor that I used to uh, preach under. And that I was walking up to the pastor and giving the pastor a hug and telling the pastor I was sorry. And when I woke up, I realized how horrible I was to this pastor and their family because I was preaching at their church. And all of a sudden, because of some tension between us, I ended up just leaving the church and I never came back. And what happened was I was hurt in my heart and I just left after preaching at the church for about a, a year or more I just left out of the blue and, and went, went went started doing street work I never told them no, nothing never talked to them again and I was really really close this pastor in their family was really really good to me but what happens was I got hurt in my heart and um, it was giving me trouble over time. And it was about over a year I never talked to them. But because I was in prayer asking God if I hurted somebody, God brought me that dream of the pastor. And when I woke up and really thought about, you know, what I really done to them, I really had done them wrong. And their daughter had died and I was close to their daughter. And I, ne I never even called and gave my condolences about their daughter dying. I mean, I was horrible. And I just began to weep and cry. And I realized how, how bad of a person I was. And I, and I went on a mission to, to find the pastor's number and get in touch with them. And after a while of praying and searching, I found the pastor's number and I called. And, and they would never answer the phone until one day they called the number back. And I, I just started crying when when I answered the phone and I was just asking them for forgiveness and, and told them I was sorry and just kind of confessed how horrible of a person I was, how I didn't call when your daughter died, how I just left and never said nothing. And what happens was because I did that, they was hurt. And, you know, the pastor was explaining to me how there was a release from us reconciling like this. And we went on and I was so blessed from our conversation because we talked for about four hours on the phone after not talking for like about over a year. And I mean, there was strong reconciliation of forgiveness right there. And, you know, what happened was I hurt them and it was hindering their walk in ministry and and you know and this is how unforgiveness affects our hearts it will f affect every aspect of your life the way you treat people the way uh, you are or when it comes to your relationships even your ministry there will be a regression in our hearts you know not just from from me being wounded but the other people being wounded too in the process.
So, you know, glory be to the Lamb of God. I'm so thankful that when I was praying that the Lord brought me that dream and, and, and showed me, Jacob, you hurt this pastor. You was wrong. And I was like, wow, I was. And it's like reality settled in when I woke up out of that dream. And that was God's mercy towards me, you know, because I was really fighting some regression in my life. I was I was fighting some struggles and didn't understand where it was coming from. And it was because of unforgiveness, not reconciling uh, to my brothers and sisters that I had heard it. And, you know, God in his mercy brought me that dream because I prayed and I asked him and he wanted me to make things right. And uh, he seen that I had a desire to make things right. And um, he brought me that dream and I called him and, and we had an awesome conversation. And I mean, we, we talked about God. We, we laughed, we giggled, I cried. <laughs> I, was, I was just really feeling horrible, but I felt really good after. I, I felt really, really like I pleased God. And I was like, oh, thank you, Jesus. I'm so thankful. I cried after I got off the phone. I was like, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And I felt so good. And, you know, love brings us comfort in our heart. And it's so important that we love and we walk in love and forgive everybody, everybody that has ever done something to us. It's not worth holding on to. Eternity is not worth it holding on to unforgiveness. We just need to let it go. And we need to bow up in the love of God and say, I am going to love everybody. I am not going to let nobody hurt me. Uh, even if they if they speak to me bad, I'm going to say, God, I am going to love them anyway. And I'm going to face face my face the fear of humbling yourself because a lot of times... Fear is going to want to lash onto your heart and try to keep you from humbling yourself and going up to them people and telling them you're sorry or calling them on the phone and telling them you're sorry. But you need to intentionally go past that fear. Don't let that fear stop you from humbling yourself into a position of repentance and going up to them people and asking them uh, for forgiveness and telling them you're sorry. God will bless you. And you're going to be like, wow, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. So glory be to the Lamb of God. I just wanted to kind of encourage y'all. Let go of that unforgiveness. Walk in love because it's all about love. It's all about walking in love. And uh, it's only the love of God that's going to keep us strong uh, and keep us into a position of enduring all the hardships that we are going to face in these last days. In the book of Corinthians, it says love endures all things. So we need to have love in our hearts and walk in love continually. So glory be to the Lamb of God. Y'all be blessed and y'all have an awesome and amazing day today.